Today is Saturday, May 18th, 2019. Welcome to the Survivor Fans Podcast. I'm Joanne. And I'm Stacy. And this is the listener feedback show for the finale of Survivor Edge of Extinction. It is an overcast, drizzly day. <laughs> in California. In Northern California. <laughs> as we gather together for our final time this season to talk about Season 38, Edge of Extinction, Folks have thoughts about the finale. They've got thoughts about the theme and how it affected the overall Mm -hmm. season. And some people are happy and some people are sad. And some people are both. Yeah. And all of the reactions are good. And we're here to share the whole spectrum today. Because that's how we... That's how we sign off with the season. That's how we tie our bow on it. Is that we get together... And we share our experiences and we get to learn from each other in that process. And sometimes you're granted the opportunity to see things through someone else's eyes. Quite frequently. Yeah. And that's the good thing. And that's because we got a rich community here of people who love the show Survivor in all its various forms. Helps me from getting stale. Helps you from getting stale. I mean. Yeah. Okay. With my own opinions. I, I get I see. to see new opinions. Fresh opinions exactly. here. Exactly. Yep, every week while the season's running. That's what we love. So we do the recap. We recap the finale. Now we hand it over to you one last time to share your thoughts and analysis and what you're thinking about that new season because there's certainly things to be said about that and <laughs> we're looking forward to hearing all of them. So pros and cons and in the middle of the whole spectrum. Let's get it started with a call from Pete. Hey, Joanne and Stacy, This is Pete from Boston calling here. I'm back, and what an awesome finale. If only Devin's had won, but I love the finale. I'm going to let out a great, big... Awesome, man. And I have to say, that Edge of Extinction twist, I know it caused some controversy, but I think it was a, a solid twist. And unlike Redemption Island and Ghost Island, it worked out big time. As Chris, of all people, comes back, he was voted out day eight and ends up being the sole survivor. Congratulations, Chris. Now, I know a lot of folks are going to say he was voted out, he was on Extinction, and he came back. But you got to give him credit. I mean, he could have been voted out on day 35, but he got Lauren to play the idol for him when she didn't need to. Then he did it from there. He had the idol in his bag, and then um, and then he won immunity at Final Four. And the biggest move of all that I think led to all those votes was giving up his idol to Julie and, and putting his own self on the line against the great Rick Devins. That was gutsy and a huge gameplay move and it worked out in his favor in a very close fire making challenge. Great job by Chris but Rick Devins was to me the player of the season. Even though he came back from extinction as well but he had to endure so much find an idol after idol after idol when his back was against the wall he had to win challenges because no one wanted to work with him that guy did amazing and he always had some entertainment in him too with the news flash. I guarantee you're going to see him in a future season. Probably in a few years from now, Rick Devins will be back a second time. The jury didn't seem bitter. They seemed to handle it with pride. Even Reem seemed all right. The dude and all that. She's something, Reem. But they all, you know, seem very great in their questioning. Aubrey, Joe, Wentworth. I think, honestly, it seemed like Wentworth and Lauren, I I think they seemed a little bit bitter because 
they surprised me. They voted for Gavin. Devin's voted for Gavin. Aurora, I guess I wasn't surprised with Aurora. She voted for Gavin. I think Lauren was upset because of the of how Chris played her with the idol. Because she knew deep down she should have kept it for herself. She would have been in the final four. But that was her own doing. And you got to, again, give Chris credit. But, man, this was a great finale. I like that Probst didn't go in the stands during the reunion show. And I like that even though we didn't hear everyone, he named, I think, just about all the castaways. I think uh, the only one he might have not named, I thought, was Eric. Even Keith, he mentioned in the beginning, how he was one of the ones that quit with Wendy. So it's good he named he named everyone and kept it short. Next season, with, with all these newbies and with Sandra and Boston Rob returning, that is going to be very intriguing. But it was a great season, guys. I enjoyed it. I'm back from a great Turks and Caicos twist, and I can't wait to see more Survivor in the fall. This is going to be awesome. Take care. Woo! <laughs> All right. Thanks, Pete. I like how he described his vacation as the Turks and Caicos twist. <laughs> oh, uh, you stuff. know, I was just thinking as Pete was saying that, both of the the people who made it more interesting at the end were people who came back from Edge of Extinction. What hmm. would the game have been like if they had never come back? We'll never know the theme frame. Given the sequence of events, they chose to frame the season the way they did. Exactly. And there's, so I'll go ahead and mention it now. There's a good series of interviews with that Dalton Ross did with the last folks who left the game and you get to hear things you get to hear some extra stuff about victoria and how she was according to her she was looking really hard for idols you get to hear i don't know julie talk about how she thinks she could have won in the fire challenge (laughs) same with gavin oh even though they hadn't practiced so that Hmm. mm. anyway there is some there is some good little nuggets in those interviews and you you um like for example another thing that pete was just referencing about when he gave up the necklace chris was talking with dalton and they had talked about that i guess back at the beginning of the season because that was fresh on everyone's mind that was the last season that they got to see so when dominic didn't give up the necklace and chris has that in his head Mm -hmm. he's thinking that might be a move that i need to make and so he's presented with exactly that circumstance and it's like hey it's a Mm. no-brainer i've got to do this and maybe this is an omen very fresh yeah in his memory so that's his last survivor season memory is well seeing that i truly don't believe he would have won if he and uh uh rick had gone to the final three together no when you see the ponderosa videos and you hear that reaction they loved him. to devon's yeah <laughs> they a lot of them really really did so i'm, I'm not sure chris would have got any votes yeah, honestly no. even with a great performance at the end well the other thing is i noticed there were uh, other people on the ponderosa videos that were saying dude so obviously Reem rubbed off on some of them as well. Yeah, unfortunately that seems to be the case. Yeah, I found those very interesting. <laughs> I really liked the Ponderosa yeah. videos. Yeah, they there were different of because of there. the timing and how everything was compressed. And you could see the people who were still really struggling too, like Joe and Aubrey. Joe, yeah. Yep. All right. You know what else? What else? I just have to say, Mm -hmm. watching the Ponderosa videos, I went, there's the Eric that I wanted to see. (laughs) Yeah. I love that personality. Why didn't they show us any of that? Because of... Because it wasn't the story, I know. Yeah. I knew my own answer, but it was like, that's who I wanted to see on the show. Yeah. That's who I fell in love with before the season. Very charismatic. With the interview and stuff that I saw Mm -hmm. is... Was that personality? I, so. I like. There was one little segment where he was talking to, I think Victoria and Julia and Aurora were there, and he was sharing with Victoria how he knew she was busting him sometimes when he would be <laughs> scheming, and he would look over and he would meet, he would look over and see that she was watching him, and their eyes would link up, and he was like, "Oh yeah, I know I'm in trouble now, yeah. and uh, I'm just gonna slink he said away it was from very here." Scary. Yeah. So, yeah, Victoria had a fierceness that we didn't always get to see. 
Yep, good stuff. Thanks, Pete. We enjoyed that summary, and uh, glad you had a great vacation, too. Next up, we've got an email from Ed in Milwaukee. Joanne and Stacy, Chris's move to give up immunity and go against Devons in the fire challenge was extremely logical and rational. Chris knew that if Devons made the final, he would win. Therefore, Chris's only hope of winning was to keep Devons out of the final. Chris determined that he was much better at making fire than Julie or Gavin. It's better to go for the win and finish fourth than to take a secure second or third place finish. He is a deserving winner. I was cheering for anyone but Devons. He's a good guy, and I respect him immensely, and I would have said that the game is flawed if he made it to the final and lost. Some say Chris didn't deserve to win because he was only in the game a short time, but I believe that is buried within the flaw of the Extinction Island concept. Chris did everything he could do to win the game. I think you could say the same thing about Devons at that point. Okay. Yeah. His moves were not flashy, but were solid and timely. He won the re-entry and final challenges when he had to, and he made fire. Pretty flashy oh, move. Yep. <laughs> the Extinction Island concept made it difficult for the jury to adequately evaluate the gameplay of the f- weight them solely on what she saw at Tribal. But she and most of the jury had the chance to get to know Chris well. Yeah. The later vote-offs, such as Victoria and Aurora, had minimal experience with Chris, but knew Julie and Gavin very well. This made it difficult for the jury to adequately evaluate the finalist gameplay. So true. You know, the flip side of that, though, could be that um, being Chris being out there with them, he could have annoyed them. They could also have some prejudices against him mm-hmm. because of their interaction and so much time out there. Sure. Yep. This is also true. Gavin said after the game that he deliberately tried not to attract attention to himself at tribal councils because he feared that attracting attention at tribal would put a bullseye on his back. And evidence of this was his observation that this is how Julia and Wardog got voted out. Victoria said they had decided in advance to vote Aurora out of the game, but the jury gave credit to Devins and his idle flash drama and not to Gavin, Victoria, or Lauren for this move. Needless to say, I'm not a fan of Extinction Island. The only thing that wasn't lame, she provided she the. On me. She provided, yeah, you and Ed, not the only ones. She provided the only entertainment and drama on the island, dude. Now, did you add that, or did Ed put dude? No, he did. <laughs> I'm a dude person too, though. The I, not as much as her. Thankfully, no. The Extinction Island concept might have worked a little better if the original Extinction castaways were sent to Ponderosa when Devons made it back to the game. This would have reduced the jury size to 10 people, and all of the jury members would have had more time playing with the finalists. Yeah, it's a solid point. I have mixed feelings about returning player seasons, but this season it was a disaster. The intent of having a mix of returnees and newbies is to foster competition drama and gameplay but to have all four returnees out of the game was boring watching joey amazing meditate on a barren island is not must see tv and there is nothing sneaky that wentworth could do sitting on that beach joanna stacy i want to thank you and rethank you for this podcast although i listen to other podcasts you're the best and i appreciate the form that you provide for all of us super fans well you're welcome i also love hearing comments from your listeners brandon from cleveland Pete from Boston, Josh the Plush Moose, and the rest of the gang. It was particularly great to hear from a lot of new listeners this year. Yeah, it was cool, wasn't it? This season we had a lot of new folks join us. P.S. Joanne, several weeks ago, I caught your vocal rendition (laughs) of Hang On Slappy. You sing better than you give yourself credit. Don't quit your day job, (laughs) but you would be a delight at karaoke night. You would also (laughs) hold your own if you entered the side challenge and lost. Yeah. yeah. Karaoke, I could do. Side challenge, too stressful. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Ed. It's great to have you back here for the finale. But thanks anyway, Ed. Mm-hmm. Good stuff. Yeah, one of the things that was in the interview with, was it Chris? I can't remember exactly who it was. One of the Dalton Ross interviews, they said that, no, it was Chris, because he said that he went to each person on the edge and said, what would I have to do to get your vote? So he came back into the game with that kind of knowledge. That's like a a superpower (laughs) from that perspective. Now, it wasn't wasn't altogether easy, and I'll I'll let you read that, because some people said 
certain things that made it very challenging for him, but he was able to fulfill those. He even returned with a note from Ron for Julie, telling Julie that she should trust Chris. Yeah, yeah. Hmm, interesting, huh? All right, thanks again, Ed. Next up, we got an email from Sandy in Georgia. Hi, all. Can't say this was my fave ending. I know that was the premise of the season, but it fell short. Maybe if the prize money was less, I don't know. It just seems that Chris got to step away and think about the game and strategize without having to be in the game. I also wonder if the vote was a vote for Chris or a vote against Gavin and Julia. Always a good question to ask. Sorry to be emailing, but I'm in a car with a load of folks. My JSFL this season was just a shot in the dark. I remember thinking, whoever picked Chris to return and win had to be a genius. <laughs> what happened to Aubrey? She had weeks to practice. <laughs> Ugh. Yeah. I always wonder when the third place winner realizes they don't have a shot. I remember Tarzan's realization at his final tribal. Poor Julie, she was so proud of her game. She should sell bridges in New York. Gavin looked like he thought he'd win. It was close. Again, a season of Survivor that isn't great, but is better than no season at all. Going to be a long summer because I can not tolerate Sandra and Boston Bob again. Boston Rob. <laughs> Oh, yeah, Boston. Okay. I like Boston Bob. <laughs> well, That's a way know. to get a dig in, I think. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it's past my nap time. Mm. Again, Jeff Prost, Prost better be careful and not jump the shark with some ridiculous plot twist. He's skirting the edge. Well, those statues, though. <laughs> if there is one positive about the edge it kept the first vote outs in the game and in our minds no first half and second half of the game i also like that they were suffering and by their own choice <laughs> reen did stay the longest and should be applauded however after losing the first challenge and seeing who i would have to compete against as they came to the edge i.e joe i probably have raised I'd probably have raised that sale. But being on the jury, guess not. Wait a sec, chances of me ever having to make that decision are slim. Have a great summer. See you in September. Sandy from the road. All right, Sandy, thank you for making time even from the road to share <laughs> your thoughts on this season. Good job. Next up we got a call from Shay. Hey guys, this is Shay. First of all, it was an absolutely amazing episode but my emotions were a complete and total yo-yo because originally i wasn't really feeling anybody to root for and my husband decided he was going to root for chris so i just hopped on that bandwagon and no sooner did we decide that he got voted out and so the next week we chose Devin, because he seems funny and nice, and by golly, if he didn't get voted out the next week. And so we were just like, well, whatever. And then Devin made it back in. Of course, we were behind him again. He made it really, really exciting to root for him. He was amazing. He played this game in a very stellar fashion. Every little box you can check off can be checked off, as far as I'm concerned. So we were fully behind him. And last night, when Chris made it back in, my husband, without a thought, was like, oh, well, my guy's back in. I'm for Chris. And I'm like, are you for real? I mean, what about Devin? And he's, yeah, I mean, he's great. Maybe he'll get second place, but I'm for Chris. And I was torn. I was so torn. But then as I watched the show and watched Chris make one amazing move after another he thought about everything he was doing and all the different outcomes i was like well gosh i don't know what to do i don't know what to do and then when you finally get to that place where devins might have to do fire i'm i'm upset he's played too well to go home and then for chris to give up his necklace and go to fire too well how brave and again i agree with you guys he probably thought he was the only one that could take devin's out and so now here we have the two people 
uh, that I'm rooting for going against each other. I really wanted them both on the panel and let the jury decide. So I was devastated when Devin left. I don't know if I've ever seen someone play the game so hard and lose. And I kept saying that I thought that Chris should take Devin's because he played really well. And my husband reminded me of season two and how Tina won because somebody thought she played well and brought her with them. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. Then when it gets to them pleading their case, I found myself having moments of being like, yeah, Gavin has a point. I mean, I get what Gavin's saying right now, which shocked me. I looked at my husband and said, I literally forget that Gavin's on the show. For him to be talking and saying things that had me kind of pulling for him a little bit was shocking to me. But in the end, I felt like Chris should win it. And he did. So, I mean, that was great. But I don't know if I've ever been really, really excited and let down at the same time. And that's just how I still find myself a day later. I don't know how I feel. I really liked the reunion, blah, blah, blah. I just, uh, I'm glad that Chris won out of the people that were on the panel. But to root for somebody all the way up to the finale and then have to change gears like that, I just, I need a margarita. And I also need to hear what everybody else is going to say. All right, thanks. Bye. (laughs) <laughs> that's a perfect kind of condensed version well, of the whole thing and that's I love that. when you're exhausted when the show is over yeah exactly you've had so much emotional upheaval but wait roller but wait. coaster yeah good deal thanks shay we enjoyed that and certainly share a lot of your sentiment there next up we got an email from christiana in boston hi joanne and stacy well, the commercial said it would be one of the most surprising Survivor finales ever, and I guess that's true. However, the way this season ended really frustrated me. I just don't understand how someone can win the title of Soul Survivor who truly did not appear in half the episodes in the season. Within the finale episode itself, I agree that Chris came out on top of the Ultimate Final Three, and to be fair, he did win the fire-making challenge, probably from all the practice of making fire out on Extinction Island. But for me... The winner of a season of Survivor is sort of the emblem for the season, the person around which I will retroactively understand the narrative of the season. With Chris, I don't think it'll feel that way. I think you're right there. And while I am a huge fan of the show, I am aggravated that someone voted out on Day 12 can ultimately be named the sole survivor. He did survive a long stint on Extinction Island, which I guess was the whole shtick of the season to begin with. So the producers seemed to get what they wanted, and I suppose that was the whole point, that while the players on the edge of Extinction aren't in the main game, they're still in part of the game as outlined in the twist of this particular season, and I guess I can accept that. After further thought, I think also I wouldn't mind the twist as much if the season didn't involve returning players. In hindsight, having returnees this season didn't really add anything, and in my opinion, for all four of them, took away from their overall reputation in the context of Survivor. I feel like having returnees mixed with the first-time players in a season is a twist within itself, and so the combination of both those things I don't really feel was necessary. I'm looking forward to hearing what the other fans think, both of the finale and the season as a whole. Thank you, Joanne and Stacy, for creating the Survivor community. I'm so glad I found this podcast last year so I can share my fandom with others around the country and the world, as I don't have many people in my life who are as much of a fan of the show as I am. Have a great summer, everyone. Thank you, Christiana. I love that sentiment there at the end, as well as your sharing of your overall thoughts. I think a lot of people can relate to that. Good job. Next up, we got an email from Jack in California. Hey, everyone. This was a really fun season as a whole. Congratulations to James and Shannon for winning the side challenge. The edge challenge looked pretty difficult, and I didn't see Aubrey's advantage work in her favor. (laughs) Definitely not. The rope bridge part of that challenge seemed tricky. Great job, Chris, for making it back into the game. Ever since Rick came back into the game, he's been working very hard to get where he did. The fake idols that he created were quite impressive, and both Lauren and Julie fell for it. The finale challenges were pretty cool. For the first challenge, I think the reason Chris was helping Julie was because he knew he couldn't win and they all knew Rick shouldn't continue to build his resume. Gavin seemed to be having a blast at the second challenge and that seemed to be a pretty easy puzzle to solve. 
Did it show us how Gavin knew about Rick's idol that he found, or did they just assume he found another? Yeah, they were there. Yeah, they yeah. were. They actually saw him. Yeah. Uh, for the fi- for the final challenge of the season, that platform seemed difficult to keep things stable with how wobbly it was. I was not surprised to see Rick at the fire making challenge. However, I am surprised that Chris took that gamble, or as Stacy would probably say, bold move <laughs> after winning immunity for the night. That's not really me, that's props. I'm just Yeah, right. <laughs> I do feel it was a fitting end to the season, though watching both the Edge returnees battle one last time to make it to final three. I have to agree with the jury on Julie's emotions being a bad strategy. I'm happy to see Chris as the winner of the season. I just don't think he worked nearly as hard as Gavin or Julie to make it there. This was a great season overall, though. I hope you all have a great break, and we'll talk to you guys again when Boston Rob and Sandra take over the island of the Idols next season. All right. Thanks, Jack. Up next, we have a call from Leela. Hi, this is Leela from Texas. I just wanted to say about the last episode of season 38. I loved the challenges, and I honestly thought Lauren wasn't going to get through the last challenge. And I thought the challenges were amazing and how hard they were and how Chris actually won. I think that was amazing. And I love how Rick got $100,000 even though he didn't win. And he did play an amazing game. And I enjoyed watching him and making the fake idols and watching Lauren getting the idols and actually thinking they were real. So they played two fake idols and two real idols. So then Rick ended up getting home, and I got really sad because we all wanted him to win the game, or even Gavin. But I'm surprised that Julie made it to the end with Rick, Gavin, and Chris. It was fun to see the challenges where they had different obstacles and the huge puzzle piece, and how Chris was trying to get Julie to take him to the final three and how he tra- he tricked her with that. I love how Chris went up in a battle against Rick to make fire, and I thought that was, we thought that was gonna happen in the beginning, but I, we weren't too sure about it. But when we saw Rick got that flame in the end, we were getting really happy, but Chris, he was, his fire was already burning the rope, and it was fun to watch it. Bye, thank you. All right. Good job. Good job, Leela. Yeah, he really nailed it. And for some extra insight into that particular little event there where Chris ended up helping Julie with that puzzle, make sure to check out the Dalton Ross interview with Chris, and you'll find out why he felt, given the circumstance he was in at that point in that challenge, that that was the right path, and you'll find out whose jury vote he was courting when he decided to do that. I don't know why you didn't just tell. Because it's fun to go read on your own and there are other things to learn. (laughs) Okay, up next we got an email from Cameron in North Carolina. Hey, Joanne and Stacy. Unfortunately, I have to email this week instead of call in because I'm on a road trip and currently in Denver. These road trips are a theme in the feedback this week. So not much opportunity to talk, sadly. I was cheering once I saw Chris come back. I thought Joe might win at first, but his edit this season just didn't grace him enough for him to actually be able to win that competition. Hearing that the Edge of Extinction perceived Victoria as a threat alongside Rick struck me as surprising. I felt her edit overall was fairly purple, and Jeff even played on that at the reunion how under the radar she could be. Ultimately, I can't say I think Lauren and Victoria had amazing games, but props to them for making it far. So we get to what was supposed to be the highlight of the season, Chris challenging Rick himself to making fire. Somewhat gimmicky, but in my eyes, basically the winner of this challenge would guarantee themselves a million dollar check. After all, they'd be sitting next to two of the purplest goats of the season. Coming into the episode, I told myself if we saw a returnee from the edge win the game, this season would be ruined. However, with that being said, I can go back to my week three listeners feedback and hear myself again saying I really hope to see Chris return and numerous times after that. So seeing him come back, strategize well, 
quite literally put himself on the edge once more with that fire build, I can safely say that while I'm sad Rick's edit blindsided us, I'm completely satisfied with Chris Underwood as a winner of Survivor. Granted, we probably saw less of Chris than any other Survivor winner in history. I compare his gameplay to be like an honest Brian Hedick. Social game was kept high, especially on the edge of extinction, and he was just not afraid to put himself out there and be blunt with it. Props to him. I think there's more to that comparison than I would initially recognize, but that they both are salesmen, and so there's something going on That's there. True. Yep. I was a little surprised Rick Devins wound up being a bitter juror. I can't seem to justify any other reason he voted for Gavin aside simply from bitterness. I wound up with 59 in JSFL. Not that bad. I was contemplating doing the side challenge this season, but I was too afraid I'd actually have to sing because I lost my first time playing in it. But now it looks like it wouldn't have been that way after all oh it's easy to come to that conclusion yeah. in hindsight it's another thing just like with what it's rick was was trying to highlight it's never another thing to be in the challenge all through the season just like it's another thing to be in the game all through the season next season on survivor but i i don't want to discourage you in any way we would love to have you in the side challenge cameron <laughs> next season on survivor something new and a way to include returnees without them actually returning so I can dig it under one condition. Boston, Rob, and Sandra are at no point to be allowed to enter the game as normal players. That would be preposterous, and I think it's safe to say we all, as Survivor fans, are more than full with seeing them playing the game. Well, you'd be surprised. Tons of people would love to see them back in. We always suspected CBS idolized Sandra and Rob, so I guess with season 39, they're just full on embracing it now. I like that. At the end of the day, I was leaning more towards disliking the twist of the season, and while I understand how it impacted the final vote, I would rather not see it again. Even as a kid, I wasn't a fan of Redemption Island every time it came around, so this took that to a whole other step. This season falls in the upper half of seasons with me, but not the top. People were definitely playing the game this season, so the only major complaint I had was with the twist. Here's to hoping for a good season 39 as well. I like that positivity. Also, rest in peace, Ashley, from Survivor China. Very sad to see you go at just 39 years. Man, those wrestlers, that, um, that's, that's really rough. That they're, <laughs> they're just not taken care of well at all, and that was sad. Yeah, That's all, folks. Have a great summer, and I'll see you all at the 39th season. This is Cameron from North Carolina signing off. Good job, Cameron. Thanks for that. Next up, we've got an email from Doris in California. Hi, Joanne and Stacy. Well, I'm finally chiming in at the very end of the season. After being a faithful Survivor fan since the middle of season one, I'm starting to lose interest. Uh -oh. This season did nothing for me, and I actually turned off the TV after the second hour. Mm. I listened to the podcast so I know who won, but this season was a dud, and I'm rolling my eyes over the next season's advisor concept. Regarding Chris, we saw so little of him that I had absolutely no emotional investment or even an opinion on him winning. Production should have only allowed one person to come back from the edge of Extinction Island. The second person coming back so late in the game didn't work for me. Though Chris's strategy was sound and handing over his immunity necklace was a big move. I just didn't care enough about him. But as always, I appreciate and enjoy everything you guys do. And who knows, by the time I hear Mad Sumo's on the grill for season 39, I may dive back in. We hope so. Enjoy your summer break. And by the way, did Stacy go to the casting call in the Bay Area a couple months ago? Now that would be enough of a reason to watch. <laughs> no. I uh, actually, we didn't know about it, but if you hear of another one, give a holler. Yeah. You, you probably would have. Mm, if we'd heard about it, you nah, think? No, not right now. No, not, not right now. Not, okay. Not, not with all the things we got <laughs> okay. happening. So. All right. Thanks, Doris. It's good to hear from you. Yeah. Next up, we have a call from Jody. 
Hey Survivor family, it's Jodie in Brisbane. I have been fairly absent for most of this season, just my work schedule has been a bit nutty. Yeah, still watching, still listening, and I've been so preoccupied that this season has bookended nicely with me forgetting in the first episode to put my picks in and in the last, so that was pretty funny. Somehow I ended up getting four points. I'm not really sure how that happened. I hated this finale. Chris had a fairy tale ending, um, but I honestly couldn't determine between Eric and Chris when they came back. They kept flashing up on the screen and thank God there were little words down the bottom telling me who they are because I kept going, oh, that's, oh, no, it's not. Oh, God, which one? I just don't know them. That Like there was no development of story. There was no characterization. It just, that is so forgettable to me. And I would struggle to pick Chris out of a lineup even now. And talking to one of my friends who loves the show, casual fan, she she's just so angry and to the point where she's meh on future seasons and she loves the show. And to me, a move like this where only the super fanatical hardcore fans who are watching all the extras on online, which this season I haven't been either, I think you make the casuals angry, they leave in droves and you risk the future of the show because people fall out of love with it. So I'm I'm not high on this episode. I was so disgusted. I even just walked away before they brought out the big reveal that Boston Rob and Sandra are coming back for the next season. And like a mixed season of newbies and returnees, one after the other. Eh, I don't know. Um, I'm really on struggle street with this and uh, I hope everyone else enjoyed it. Like, like Chris did have a super duper, you know, run. I was gutted when Victoria was voted out. I was gutted when Devons was voted out. And I'm sitting at the final three thinking, I don't care about any of you. That was really hard and it's like horrible on the back of such a strong season, such aggressive gameplay and edge of extinction was crap. The the people I would have been happy with coming back would have been like Aurora last in or Victoria last in rather or Reem. I love Reem. She's so funny. And like the first vote out, you know, you understood her as a person. I'd pick her out of a lineup. Okay, guys, uh, I'm over for time and um, making up for the rest of the season. I really can't wait to hear what you guys think. And I'll see you for whatever that next one is. All right, guys. Bye. All right. Thanks, Jody. Yeah, those points that the four points you got, those were safe points that you got that rolled. So even though you didn't make your last picks because of the way the system set up it rolled your previous picks and lucky you <laughs> they were okay <laughs> all right thanks great to hear from you next up we got an email from mike in omaha joanna stacy i've taken some time to watch some exit interviews and better formulate my thoughts and fully unpack just what we all witnessed as this 38th season of survivor I will try to break it down as best I can. My feelings are a bit jumbled, but there is an overarching sentiment at the end of it all. I liked that this season was, in my opinion, very entertaining, and I also like the seasons that are unpredictable and, for lack of a better word, a bit random. Survivor 38 certainly applies here. However, I was horrified last year when I found out that what this twist actually entailed, and my opinion hasn't changed one inch. I think it's inherently wrong for a player who has been voted out to win. As an entertaining as I find Rick Devins, that would apply even to him had he not been ousted by the fire-making challenge. Chris Underwood, I predicted that you'd come back, but in JSFL, I said Aurora would go. Go figure. <laughs> a lot of people fall prey to that. said Aurora would. Chris played as good of a game as he could have given what happened to him. He shouldn't win, in my opinion, because he had been voted out. But he had the foresight to keep playing the game, even on the edge. Exit interviews from others explained as much. Good for him recognizing that, and good on him for knowing he needed that fire build to pad his final speech at the end. 
But the edge of extinction was not as hard as being in the game. Several players said so in exit interviews. So for this reason, more than any other makes me think Chris is an extremely, extremely fortunate individual. He wins on a technicality that's absolutely, to me, the only way to see it. He got to let the game go, swoop in at the finals, and win the million. That's aggressively unfair, CBS and Propes. Okay, but there's nothing fair about Survivor, even though I think a lot of people agree with that. It is true. I wound up liking this cast, especially Rick, Lauren, Gavin, and Victoria, and I would love to see any of them return. I also feel more secure in how I interpret the edit than ever, as I suspected the winner wasn't coming from that comma six. I've appreciated listening to this podcast greatly. I have only one thought left. At the final tribal, Wardog said that the theme wasn't on trial the players were. But after this travesty of an ending, again, though I like Rick a lot more than Chris, this would still apply if Rick Devins were to have won. Shouldn't the theme be on trial? It's just crazy shenanigans for shenanigans sake. I hate it. Here's hoping CBS never revisits this awful twist. Let the edge go extinct. Oh, I love that. I'm 100% on board <laughs> with you there, Mike. Good job. Great to have you with us this season, too. Next up, we got an email from Caleb in Texas. Hello, Joanne and Stacy, and all the amazing Survivor fans. Wow, what a great and unexpected finale. The fact that Chris won goes to show how wacky this whole episode was. It may have been wacky, but it was still great TV. On the Chris note, I'm happy he got into the game, but it was weird for the comma people who didn't know him at all. It was also kind of funny to think how Chris did more to build his resume in six days while he was in the game, and he did more than Gavin and Julie. Yeah. Devins was great in the finale. I'm bummed he didn't win, but it's not the end of the world. He went as far as he could, and he could do nothing about it. I watched the Ponderosa videos, and they showed how much everyone cared for each other out this season, and I, was, I really appreciated that. Everyone played hard, and I hope we get to see that next season. Speaking of which, the next season sounds pretty good, theme-wise. We will have to wait and see if we have another good cast, but I can't wait already. Anywho, I would like to thank you, Joanne and Stacy, for putting the work and effort into this podcast. I would also like to thank all the Survivor fans who send feedback into the podcast as well. I hope everyone has a great summer, and I'll be back next season. Bye. All right. Thanks, Caleb. Up next, we have a call from Crystal. Hi, Joanne and Stacy. This is Crystal from Pasadena. I first want to start up by saying that overall, I really did love this season of Survivor. And it has a lot of moments for me that I will remember and that I will be happy to remember. But unfortunately, the finale was not one of them. I was really bummed out and disappointed. And I'm not sure if it's because Joe didn't earn his way back or because Devin's didn't win. Or it could be both, actually. I'm sure it probably is both. And I was really disappointed. Not to say that Chris didn't deserve it. I think that he made the most out of his time there. Definitely more than Gavin and Julie. I think that he had very few days and a lot of great epic moves. Very smart. And so I do think that he was deserving to win based on the players that were left. But overall, I just didn't feel a connection with him. I feel like usually I want to jump out of my seat for joy and be so excited for the winner, but I didn't really feel a connection to his journey. I got, you know, a few clips of him sitting on a rock. And by the way, Joanne, I did think of you when he made his way back in because I feel like you called it because of his big cinematic uh, picture of him sitting on the rock reading his letters. Other than that clip and then his few great game moves, I didn't really feel a connection to him enough to be overjoyed that he won. So I feel like that was kind of a miss for me. But again, very deserving. I, I do feel like he had some great moves there towards the end. One of the other things that kind of stood out to me was how annoyed I was by Julie in the finale. I'm not sure if I had just had enough 
with her all season long and this was kind of the breaking point or if the finale she was just extra obnoxious but I really didn't appreciate how she clapped when Rick Devins lost the fire making challenge as if that was her big moment and door of opportunity to win I thought that no matter what she was gonna be in third taken as a goat regardless of who won so I thought her clapping was kind of ridiculous and her trying to say that she cried on purpose I also thought was equally ridiculous but looking back on the season of Survivor I think years from now I won't probably remember who won but I will remember Rick Devins and the amazing genius moves that he made throughout the game and how he kept me on the edge of my seat so I do have something positive to take from this season and moving forward I'm really excited to see next season and how the mentor twist is going to play out and of course I'm looking forward to hearing what everyone has to say about not only this season but the upcoming one as well and until next time i hope everyone has a great day and a great summer bye all right thanks crystal good job you know that was a good point i hadn't really thought about that which one uh what crystal talking about how julie clapped and was so excited Mm -hmm. when uh rick lost in chris won i think that was because she knew she didn't have a chance against Rick mm-hmm. in the final three, and I think she thought she had a chance against Chris. Sure, yeah. Well, and there's I, that's every, why she was... Every reason to think you ...as would. excited. Yeah. Plus, the, it, her perception of the game didn't really match with what we were given of the game. Yeah, what we were shown, yeah. Yeah, so it's not surprising, I guess, in that sense. But, yeah, there's definitely... Even though she was all about the morally wrong... <laughs> And making sure that Chris got fed, yeah, there's a mean side to Julie for sure. Yeah, she delighted in going after Devin's. Yeah, she delighted in going after Devin's multiple times. So celebrating his demise in the game doesn't. I don't see that as mean. I just see that as promoting her game. Mm -hmm. That's. I don't really see that as mean. It's another way to perceive it, I guess. Okay. Thanks again, Crystal. Yeah, you usually do, don't you? Thanks again, Crystal. Next up, we got an email from Michelle in Australia. Hello, everyone. I thought I would start my feedback with something positive and say how much I've enjoyed listening to the podcast this season. It has been wonderful, and you both do an amazing job. Thank you, Michelle. Yeah, we get a lot of help from the super fans. That said, the best way to describe how I feel about the finale is conflicted. There is no doubt that Chris outplayed everyone else in the last three days of the game. But who is Chris again? He left the game so early that I was not invested in him at all. I hardly know anything about him, except that he wanted to play the perfect game. I also don't like that he was given an idol. The problem with this season was Extinction Island and bringing someone back so late. At least with Devins, there was time for people to get behind him. After the finale, I was thinking I was probably the only one thinking that. It was all a bit lame, but after reading Dalton Ross's column, it seems there are others that feel the same as I do. I hope Extinction Island never comes back, or at least limit it to one returnee at the merge. And for goodness sake, can we have less idols? How about not replanting idols past Final Six or Seven? I'm yearning for the days where you had to rely on social strategy and manipulation to get yourself to the end. I'm interested to hear what other people think about another season with returnees. Personally, I would have liked a break before seeing more past players. Cheers. Thanks, Michelle. I'm with you 100%. Not a big fan of the returnees thing. It should be a unique treat that's very infrequent as far as I'm concerned. But they're they're so tempted because they believe the returnees brings brings the numbers in. So... And it's all about selling ads in the end. They're, they've got to make money to keep producing the show with every episode estimated costing around a million bucks. That's they they got to have eyes on, and they've got to be able to sell those ads so that we can get more of the show we love. So it's a interesting balance, isn't it? And if if you didn't think that this wasn't all about and designed to bring back one of the returnees. Just imagine that it was Joe that came back instead of Chris, because that's really what this was all designed for. And think about how you would have felt about things differently. Even though you didn't get to see him play a lot of the game, you know Joe. So that's why they thought this could work. I'm almost sure of that. Thanks again, Michelle. Next up, we got an email from Justin in Oregon. Hi, Joanne and Stacy. 
Thank you so much for hosting this forum. I've been listening for years, and I appreciate hearing your takes on Survivor. I've never met you, but I feel like we're good friends <laughs> since I've heard your Survivor takes for cons- so consistently and for so long. We well, thank you. I have to say I'm disappointed, hugely disappointed, in the way this season played out. Devins played an epic game, so it stung that he was voted out by somebody we hadn't seen on the island for 20 or more days. Because Chris hadn't been on the island for such a long time, we haven't spent much time with him. The result is that the game has been won by somebody we don't know at all. This has to be the nightmare (laughs) scenario for the show's producers, so I hope we don't see this twist again. Despite my disappointment with the ending, I enjoyed the middle of the season a lot. I thought Devin's dominance in challenges and in finding idols made for fun TV. And I can't wait for next season. All right. Thanks, Justin, for chiming in. Mm -hmm. Good job. Next up, we have a call from Steve. Hi, guys. I'm Steve from Philadelphia. I just started listening to your podcast recently. And since I got a new job and I have a lot of downtime where I can actually listen to other podcasts. So I started listening to yours and I'm actually probably one of the few people that might enjoy Chris as a winner. I'm not a fan of players like Rick and Ben who constantly just find idols and make their way to the end of the game without any real strategy. And I know in the purest of me, as someone who's watched Survivor for every season i like to think that I, I wouldn't have wanted chris to win but compared to gavin and julie i just thought what he did in the last three days of the game was better than anything that they put together and for rick to go out at fourth via chris's hands i think was just the the best thing chris could have done to prove himself to the jury so I'm just, I know a lot of people are going to be upset that Rick lost, but I blame that more on the editing of the show. They could have showed more of, not, maybe not more of the edge of extinction, but some way, I guess that they would have had to show a little more of Chris there and just other players there. Because all we were getting was the Rick Devins edit, and that's probably why a lot of people are going to be disappointed, but I feel like we've gotten to see more of the other players. Maybe that wouldn't have been the case. So I guess I'll see you guys next season. Take care. All right. Great to have you here, Steve. And because we can't get enough, Steve, we've got another Steve. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) So Steve from Wisconsin. Chris's move blew me away, but in the end, I believe it was the fire challenge that really determined the ultimate winner of the game. Chris wins, impresses the jury, and gets a vote. If Rick had won, I think he would have gotten the votes to win, too. The people who voted for Gavin were going to do that anyway. Now, that being said, I don't know that I could have predicted how the jury would have voted had both Rick and Chris been in the final three. Unless we need it for other purposes, I think we should have a who is going to win Sia's $100,000 question as part of the final week going forward. That's funny. <laughs> Although that's that number is new, right? That's quite high compared to previous ones that yeah. she's done. Yeah, she gave. Uh, uh, she only gave Ty 50, right? I think she gave him 50 and, and 50 to a charity that he selected Okay, was kind of how that worked. Yeah. I've seen a lot of posts in other Facebook survivor groups complaining that Chris was an undeserving winner. I have to disagree. I think the edge of extinction was a great twist and kept everyone on their toes. Heck, just look at JSFL. No one got the final order exactly right. And I cannot remember a time since I've been running this website When that happened, so many people picked Rick to win, and he ended up on the jury. Wow, Boston Rob and Sandra. Can't wait to see how that twist's going to work. Have a great summer. Enjoy the end of Amazing Race and the season of Big Brother. All right. Thanks, Steve. Great to have your feedback here in the last episode. Both Steves. (laughs) Next up, we got a call from Kyle. Hey, Joanne and Stacey and all the Survivor fans at home. This is Kyle calling from Calgary, Canada, with some last finale feedback for survivor edge of extinction and look at that i can finally say it now it's the last episode so i guess it doesn't really matter but talk about some personal growth that i had Uh, i might just put this in a letter and read it in 30 days and tell myself how good i've done (laughs) who knows we'll see i'll let you know how it goes now this episode was very (laughs) very fun i really enjoyed it Uh, not 
without controversy if you look online but you know what doesn't create a bunch of controversy online anymore it seems like mm-hmm. you can't do anything uh, I really enjoyed Chris getting back in the game I, I felt that he might be the one uh, that that could potentially get back in the game given his uh, ability and challenges and such and I, obviously Joe was a contender as well but I was happy to see Chris back in the game I, I thought maybe that there was more to him than we saw originally because getting voted out so early I also want to commend Rick Devins and his masterful gameplay he really did amazing in these last few days that are such a challenge for so many survivors very similar to Ben and Mike that I almost thought that he was going to win and obviously you know with my last feedback it was not paid by the numbers it was really really exciting to see it happen so i'm okay with the ending i'm okay with chris winning for this season i don't want to see it again i don't want to go down that edge of extinction road any longer because i i believe that the experiment is done i think that this was honestly the best case scenario with a returnee player winning but I, I'm pretty okay with it. I, I don't need to see it any longer, and I, I would just rather a different gimmick would come up to satisfy the traditional sense of Survivor. Overall, the, the rest of the finale was fine. It, there was nothing really that special or, or crazy to me. I do want to say that the Sia payday is really funny. I didn't watch the finale until later today, so I, I read about that online. I mean, I guess good for him. He got some money because it's a consolidation prize. It's sort of interesting. I, I'm not really sure. For next season, I, I'm not sure what to say. I think the heads are hilarious. <laughs> they almost look, they're, I don't know, they just look really, really funny. And I guess we'll see how it goes. I'm happy to see Boston Rob back. I love him. It seems a little bit of a weird concept. Well, that's almost my time. I want to take the rest to thank you for all you've done for this last season. I always appreciate it. It's it's the highlight of my week. As with Survivor, I want to say thank you to all the uh, listeners that provide their feedback and give me something to listen to while I'm folding laundry on a Sunday. So that's much appreciated. And I guess until next week, I want everyone to have a great summer. Throw on your uh, your sunscreen and get out there to the beach. I don't know. Is that what? The, uh, maybe you don't even do that. Anyway, thanks again, and we will talk to you in the fall. All right. Bye. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Kyle. I like to look at the beach. Mm -hmm. Not much for being in the sun, though. Oh, no. And definitely not for being in the water. totally burn. Oh, no. That makes me (laughs) nauseous. Unless it's a pool. Mm -hmm. Be in the pool. Yep. Give her a noodle. Preferably indoors. She's good to go. (laughs) Give me my noodle. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. I can't snorkel anymore. The waves just make me nauseous. Uh (sighs) Uh-huh. Okay. Back on track here. Back got, on track. Thanks again, Kyle. We got an email from Barbara in Long Island, New York. Hi, guys. First of all, Chris played an exceptional game at the end and deserved the win. Secondly, it's an outrage that someone who missed most of the real game was voted to win. I'm so confused. Joanne, while listening to your recap podcast this morning, you said something that nearly made me spit out my coffee from laughing. Around the two-minute mark, you said, I forgot that I forgot. I know just how you feel. The last two seasons brought up the concept of women not finding idols. So here we had three women finding idols, two of whom got voted out with the idols in their pockets, and the third woman talked out of giving hers up. Uh, ladies, we know you can find them now, but you need to learn to play them. (laughs) Well said. Yeah. I bet everyone in JSFL won points for selecting Julie in third place. A goat is a goat, no matter what anyone says. I'm so sad that Survivor is over. I'll miss you and Stacy and all the great fans here. See you in September. All right. Thanks, Barbara. I'm glad you didn't spit your coffee across the table. <laughs> or onto your computer. Yeah. Yeah. Good job. Next up, we got a call from Sophie. Hi, Joanne and Stacy. I watched the episode finally last night, Friday night. Oh, my goodness, it was really great. Me and my family had just the best time watching it, and we were just in stitches seeing how Rick was making those fake idols and laughing while Lovin was finding them. That was just the highlight. His funny face watching Lovin get it from the top of the camp. 
above the beds. Oh, it was just so, so good. And Rick, you deserve to win, and I want to see you back. But hey, good for Sia. You know, she recognizes a good player, and $100,000, well worth it. Good for her for giving that to him, and all the best with your new career. Hopefully he'll get a fantastic job, and maybe I'll start watching Good Morning America or the Today Show if he moves over to a bigger channel. So Chris, he fought to the very end. He did well, and he did everything he could to win it if Devin didn't. So good for him. I had a feeling he was going to do the fire challenge himself, and it was a nail-biter. Devin really tried his best, and but Chris ultimately won that, and I had a feeling he was going to win it. I had chosen Gavin just to stick with my USB, but Gavin didn't have the same passion that he did in the Josh Wiggler interview that I heard at the very beginning of the season. He was just so passionate about the game, and he was energetic, and he seemed like such a fun guy, but his face was so serious, the whole tribal. He didn't say any big moves that he did, and he just could have worded things a bit differently. So... Chris, yeah, I guess you deserve to win it and all the best with travelling around the world in a sailboat with your new wife. So thank you guys for this fantastic season. It's been great fun going along with you all and can't wait for next. I'm happy to see Boston Rob because he's just absolutely brilliant and Sandra, she's a legend, um, warmed up to her last time that she won and hopefully they teach them not just survival skills but how to strategize and um, work the numbers and stuff. It's all new, new players, so it'll be good, and I'll be here. And I hope you all have a very safe and fun summer. I think I'm going to cancel my CBS subscription because they didn't put out enough videos, and I'd rather just donate to Joanna Stacy. So I'm going to see how I can do that. I'd rather give, <laughs> you know, that much money to you guys. You really put in a lot of effort for all of us to have fun here. So. We appreciate it. I hope you'll stay safe and well and healthy. And I'll be here. So take care. And thanks, everybody. You've really made this awesome. Take care. Bye. Thanks, Sophie. We really appreciated your contribution this season, too. Good job. Yeah, I I, I don't know why. I, it was almost like they abandoned the season halfway through. They stopped doing the extra videos. We'd just get, like, maybe one secret scene thing. And it, they made goofs in the even in the press releases that they didn't bother cor- correcting. Yeah, even after you know we had contacted someone and they were aware not we thought they'd change it, but nobody bothered. They it's like they lost interest in the season. Yeah, I I don't know. I could see why you might get worried about it if you knew what was coming. <laughs> and how it all played out. Thanks again, Sophie. Next up, we got an email from James and Shannon from South Carolina. Hey guys, here we are again, another season of Survivor in the books. Where has the time gone? I've somewhat been avoiding feedback because I just didn't enjoy the season much. I listened to my feedback and found negativity creeping in, and I don't like that. I wasn't a fan of Rick, although my wife was, and I didn't feel like anything special was going on. The edit was especially especially favorable to Rick. I even thought he was potentially getting credit for things he hadn't done. For instance, the vote off of Aurora. It just didn't feel like the story they were telling was the one that took place. Yeah, it's often like that with perception, too. I went into the finale considering this season in the lower third of Survivor. It just wasn't heading towards a good finish, and I needed a miracle. And boy, did I get it. Chris came in, and in just a few days... Outplayed everyone, including Rick, to give a satisfying result. He even pulled off one of the biggest moves in the history of the game. I'm quite pleased with the result, but I'm still not ready to say overall the season was great. Chris put more gameplay in the last few days of Survivor than most of those guys combined. It was fun to watch him put in work, and he even did the critical thing that many losers failed to do. Put the past behind them and keep all of his options open. He used Rick as a tool where it would have been very easy to distance himself from from the guy and hope the others would choose to go after Rick over him. At the same time, he was also forming relationships with the misfits and using that to get forward. Sure, it was a perfect storm of fiascos that brought him through. And that was fun to watch. He was living on the edge of extinction, came in like a wrecking ball, and in the end stood alone saying, I'm a survivor. I'm glad. I see what you did there, James. I know where that line came from. 
I'm glad Devins didn't win because it just didn't feel like a strong win. Chris made the season memorable, and that goes a long way to mend the ill feeling I was having. Somehow, Shannon and I pulled off the JSFL win, despite picks rolling over while on vacation once and losing a point due to a misunderstanding we came out on top. We were out, but somehow we came out of nowhere and won. Fitting, I suppose, considering <laughs> that is what Chris did. Exactly. Isn't it nice how JSFL is designed to mirror the game in that respect? <laughs> it just sh goes to show you that no matter how much analysis is done by the mathematically inclined father, no matter what trends you think favor one type of player over another, when it all comes down to it, Picking a player because he is cute is just as likely to be successful in the end. Yes, that was the criteria for selecting our USB this year. I'd say Shannon did that one. I almost changed <laughs> USBs at the merge to someone in the game, but we made the right choice and danced with the one that brung us. It just goes to show, and Joanne and Stacy have said it a hundred times, never give up on JSFL. You can be a middle-of-the-pack nobody one day and then the bell of the ball at the end. Even if it was one of the worst wins in JSFL history, barely breaking 100 points. Sheesh. So I guess there is one last bit of Survivor that needs to be wrapped up. We get to pick the song for the side challenge. We've thought long and hard about this. When Chris came back and started to move forward in the game, I looked over at Shannon and said that we could win the side challenge if he pulls it off. She had wanted me to put him as the overall winner, but I went safe and chose Rick. How could you not? She got really excited and the creative juices started flowing. When I found out we actually won, we started thinking of songs. Last time we went with a new pop song that Shannon really loved but wasn't necessarily themed well. We started thinking about themes for the season. Edge of Extinction was the most obvious, but there was also overcoming incredible odds to consider as well as surviving based on songs Survivor surviving based songs in general. We felt like it should be something popular. Shannon also wanted it Disney themed. <laughs> we listened to a lot of songs, toyed with the idea of picking a really long one, googled themes, listened to some really bad new music. I have to mostly defer to Shannon here because I don't have a good grasp of pop culture music these days. Plus, it pays to be kind here because as we found out, we can lose this thing just as easily as we can win it. In the end, we went with a the first song that popped into our heads when we considered the theme, one from my era, also one loosely tied to Disney since it's played on the rock and roll roller coaster. Dave, Iron Dave, could you please do a little ditty from with Aerosmith's Living on the Edge? I know it's pretty low effort, but Shannon and I are being the Shannon and I being the Sandra Diaz twine of the side challenge. Low effort seems to be called for here. Thanks again for all you do, and thanks to all the super fans out there that keep giving feedback and making this thing great. See you next season. All right. Thanks, James and Shannon. Congrats again on your challenge win, and we appreciate the effort and thought you put into that selection for poor Iron Dave. Hey, speaking of Dave, we got a call from a David, not Iron Dave. Hey, Joanne and Stacy. It's David in Pittsburgh. Well, it's a wrap. We watched... Rick and Chris fight it out, and in the end, Chris won, and I was satisfied either way, if either one had won. I think if anyone else had won, I would have been disappointed, but I do feel that the last couple episodes redeemed the entire series. It was a season of big personalities like Reem and Wendy, who went out early, and the big threats were close behind. And it was also a season of no Ponderosa clips and time away from the game whenever they were on uh, Exile Island. But I didn't like it whenever the focus was off the main part of the game. In the end, we had two strategic hard-playing contestants surrounded by a group that never really made big moves or planned ahead more than one tribal council. So was I disappointed in the season? No, not really. I mean, it helped that the last couple episodes were really, I thought, good ones. But now I'm waiting for a season 39 with Boston Robin, Queen Sandra cracking the whip out of boot camp on Idol Island. We'll see. Uh, it seems like the island seasons are never my favorites, but time will tell. When the next season airs, I'll be here with the rest of you, letting Joanne and Stacy guide us through the ins and outs of Survivor. So I'll see you guys in the fall. Bye. All right. Thanks, David. Good job. Next up, we got a call from Parker. Hey, it's Parker from Indiana. 
the finale. It was interesting. <laughs> Let's talk about my picks for JSFL. Thankfully, I'm, I'm not in the bottom of the side challenge. Thank goodness. Had Gavin in sixth, Lauren in fifth, Victoria in fourth. And then my final three was Chris, which I got right somehow. Not that he won, but that he came back in the game. That was just a wild guess. Julie in second, and Rick winning. It was, it was a very hard to predict finale. The two people that guessed Chris was winning. I don't know how they got that, <laughs> but but yeah, it was it was insane. I'm happy for Chris because you know he came back into the game and then has nothing to lose, and he just fights so hard and and he wins. So we should be happy for him because of that. But on the other hand, he was only in the actual game for 12 days, and that's just it's just so jarring that. The winner won the game without playing the actual game survivor for very long. He fought really hard. He took control at the, that finale. Rick and him basically dominated that whole finale. Wow. When he when he gave up the necklace, which, you know, I wanted to be the first to do that, to give away the necklace and then make the fire against the person. <laughs> uh, and that's a move where either it's going to work and he's going to go down as, as what a cool, risky move. Or it's going to backfire, he's going to lose, and everybody's going to be like, <laughs> dumbest player in Survivor history, am I right? <laughs> you know, that's that kind of move. When Chris made it, I lost my mind, and he beat Rick, and I was so sad. Oh, oh man, I was... I was like the fire making challenge. It fixes it fixes the pain of the f of the fourth placer. You know the fourth placer. It's usually always uh, like someone who's shined all season and and just you're rooting for, but then they get voted off right at the end. You know, like Malcolm and David Wentworth in Cambodia. You know, it is. And uh, even before the final three, you know, the third placer boot was. That same type of person, like uh, Rob's sister Nino and freaking Terry, right? So, I mean, it, it's that one's always hard. But but then the, the fire making challenge kind of fixed that. But then this time it didn't. And I was like, oh, no, Rick. <sighs> it was, it just, it's just so sad. You know what? I think we're going to see Rick again. Not soon, though. Don't make it soon. P breathing room. Don't bring back returning players every five seconds. Pace yourself, Survivor. Pace yourself. <laughs> Stop with the bringing people back, especially next season. Wow, that's has to be the dumbest idea for a season I've heard. You gotta do yourself a favor. If you're upset about how this ended, if you're upset about next season, just screenshot War Dog's facial hair and you'll be happy. <laughs> uh, all right. I think that's all I got. I will see you guys next season for the Island of Idols. Oh, boy. <laughs> all right. Thanks, Parker. I'm with you, War Dog. Oh. That, that intermediate shave that he did mm. where he cut the mustache, mustache off but left <sighs> the, the side beard, oh, almost man. like a chin beard, it... Oh yeah, it, you get to see a lot of it in the Ponderosa videos, Parker. If you haven't, if you need more laugh time, definitely <laughs> that uh, that'll get you going. He's like sitting. Yeah, that kind of that was disturbing. That sit, bothered me. Sit, it it does look odd. It is off putting. He's sitting beside David talking, and you're thinking, "Wow, what is that? Who's that monster there sitting beside David?" Oh, good stuff. Thanks again, Parker. Next up, we got an email from Leanne in Rainy, California. Hi, all. I just wanted to make sure my vote is counted for never having Edge of Extinction <laughs> ever again. Got we it. all know why. And next season, what were they thinking with those huge Sandra and Boston Rob figures? Not a good sign of things to come. <laughs> Still, Survivor is the best show ever, and here's to hoping the editors learned a few things this season and bring back more in-camp scheming and less purple players. Amen. Enough said. See you all next season, and have a great summer. All right. Thanks, Leanne. We Californians aren't loving all this rain. Not right now. We'll be missing it in a month when everything bakes yeah. out and gets dry and the wildfires <laughs> kick in. Yeah. But, yeah. Next up, we got a call from Slappy. Da -da dang, 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 dang. 
Ding, 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 ding. Ding, 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 ding. Ding, 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 ding. Ding, 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 ding. That's as close as I can get to a banjo recital. You are welcome. Hey, everybody, it's Slappy McGee calling you up from Maine. Where in Maine am I? I'm Patton, Patton, Maine this week. And I did not lose. I hung on. Hang on, Slappy. Slappy, hang on. I hung on. Oh, boy, did I hang on. Ah, uh, boy, barely, barely. Oh, I tell you, sleepless nights. And Rick didn't even win. I thought I was doomed. But fortunately, Julie got third, and I, I had picked that. I actually had picked Chris to come back into the game, so I felt pretty good about that. That was probably my best pick, was getting Chris back into the game. And out of all the choices I had, whew, that was pretty good. I felt good about that. But yeah, old Rick uh, didn't make it. Chris, uh, Chris betrayed him and, and beat him with fire, which I don't blame him. That's exactly what he had to do to win. I mean, there's no other way that Chris is going to win, I think. Well, we will never know, but that was that was the right move to make. Obviously, he won. So there you go. It, pretty much once Rick was done, we all knew that it was just going to be a consolation prize. All right, who is the best of the rest? <laughs> because you're not the best. He's sitting over there. But who are you guys? <laughs> so I wouldn't have rewarded Gavin or, or Julie either. I mean, Gavin came close, but he, he doesn't have a resume. He just, I don't know, a little milk toast for me. I think by them giving it to Chris, they were saying, okay, you guys didn't beat Rick. We'll give it to Chris because he came back in and made the right moves for what he could do. I don't know. I'm still not sure that that's the best format for Survivor, and they may not ever do it again. But it was, you know, it was entertaining for what it was. And I, and I, was, uh, I was happy that Rick got the notoriety that he did. So there you go. Looking forward to what everyone else has to say. Uh, these these uh, podcasts have been fun to listen to, to, participate with you guys. Everyone always has a unique perspective of calling in, so I'm looking forward to that. Thank you to Joanne and Stacy. Stacy, I want to hear more of your banjo recital stuff. I'm, I'm I'm actually not even kidding this time. I actually do want to hear you play some more. I, mean, I give you a hard time about it, but I, I enjoy it. So play some, play a little ditty. Play some for me. Ding, 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 ding. Your turn. Okay. Uh, Joanne, thanks for, for, for taking my side sometimes. I appreciate it. And we'll swing by, and it'll be just uh, you and Slappy McGee. We'll just be sla- we'll have Stacy in the back seat playing the guitar. We'll just drive around the country. That's all I do, just drive around. Looking forward to, to the, uh, the listener feedback show. Thanks, guys, again for all you do. And uh, Rick, come on, buddy. Get back in the game. You'll, you, you can do it. I'll, I'll stick with you this time, and I, and I will, uh, you know, we'll, we'll take it up. We'll ride all the way. We'll ride all the way to victory. We got close this time. Stacy didn't win, though. I didn't lose. We were both pretty mediocre. I can, I can take that. <laughs> Whew. All right. For the last part of the season, the slap is out. All right. He, he didn't say if he was coming back or not for the side challenge next time. No, he didn't, did he? Well, we'll see. Mm, we'll oh, see. I'm, I'm sure he'll show up. He, okay. He, I couldn't see him backing out now. Okay. <laughs> Good job, Slappy. Next up, we got a call from Mary. Hey, Joanne and Stacy. It is Mary from Michigan. I have to say, I super enjoyed this finale. I didn't expect to, honestly. I thought, oh my gosh, we're going to have the most boring final three in the world. But it turned out the way that it should, I think. I was super surprised when it was Chris that came back. I shouldn't have been. Looking back now, there was all kinds of signs during the show, him out in the middle of the ocean reading his letter. He was clearly featured. But, gosh, I just, I don't know. And I thought he would be so boring. And when he first came back, I totally thought he was going to be just a dud. But he used some strategy. When you think about it, he really just turned the whole game around for himself when he came back. And I'm super impressed with that. I did that if there was a returnee in the finale they would win unless of course Rick was there but what a great job he did getting Rick on his side and only turning on him when he had I was shocked when he gave up immunity I was having Eric wrecking back I was having those kind of thoughts like oh my gosh he just gave that up and he's going to screw himself but he didn't he pulled it out and he knew that he could and he'd watched Ghost Island and he knew that that was the trick to get the jury on his side I think so he did it and Rick got what he deserved. I mean, he got fourth place. He got the sea of money, and everyone knows he's a star. So good for him. I love the fake idols, which I got to tell you, I usually don't. I usually don't like them be that, and good. It wasn't, like, vicious. Like, he needed to do it to get 
what happened to happen, so good on him. I knew if Julie got to the end, she would be a no-vote finalist. I was surprised to see that happen and was kind of glad, and gosh, I hope she's never back again. Gavin, boring. I can't believe that he even got four votes. I mean, Rick was just bitter because Chris turned on him, but what did he expect? And shocking that Victoria did it for Gavin. She can her flipping and flopping all the way through the finale, and she got what she deserved, too. Lauren, oh, my gosh, giving that idol to Chris or playing it for him. What was she thinking? I couldn't believe it. I was super shocked, and it made no sense because it didn't get Rick out. So what, what was she thinking? I knew that he would get that idol. I can't believe Rick didn't keep his half. It was just, it was wild. I will say that. It was wild. And I'm stuck thinking... Geez, what if Joe had been there? He might have won. Although I gotta say, I'm not sure he would have pulled the stuff Chris did. So in the end, Gavin got four more votes than he should have. Julie got what she deserved, and I would see Victoria go out first in that finale. I wish that Aurora or Joe had come back, but I'm still happy with what happened. Good for Chris, and what a great recap. You guys, it was awesome. It was a great season after all. I am not digging the theme of the next season. I can't believe those giant statues. I was actually <laughs> laughing. So we'll see. All right. Until next time. Have a great summer. Take care. All right. Thanks, yeah. Mary. Mary, do you have like Disney princess power? I hear the birds. They came to chirp oh, in the background those, for you. That was really lovely. nice. <laughs> oh. That was just the perfect background. Yeah, it cracks me up every time someone mentions those giant statue heads. But, Thanks, Mary. Next up, we've got an email. Oh, oh, I was going to mention, too, the Victoria explains why she said that about Gavin when she was voted out in her uh, interview. And I'll have why links. Why she said what about Gavin? Oh, you got my vote. Oh, okay. You know, that Gavin's the one that, that's got her vote. And I'll have that in the links. The That'll be in the show notes, the links to all those different Dalton Ross interviews. So he's, he's doing a great job. There's one more thing from him i so got to remember to mention at the end. That makes it easy for me because I just go into the show notes and click on it, the link, and then I'll have to search for it. Okay. Thanks, baby. Uh, I appreciate that. Uh huh. I use it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good deal. <laughs> Thanks again, Mary. Up next, we got an email from Julie in Iowa. Hello, Survivor fan friends. Well, that didn't go as planned. As I watched the finale, I started getting this sick feeling in my stomach. I just so wanted Rick to win. But I'm not unhappy that Chris won. I didn't get any points. Zero. And I think that is why I was getting the sick feeling. (laughs) (laughs) I wasn't impressed with Gavin or Julie and was surprised, but not surprised, that Gavin got votes. I'm I'm so not impressed with the path that Survivor's taking for the next season. I want to see more of what is going on. In their everyday camp life, the confusion at the end of every episode is taking over, and I feel like we don't even know some of these people at the end of the season. But then, I'm sure they don't care what I think. <laughs> yeah, they do and they don't. Thanks for another great season of podcast, Joanna Stacy. You are the best. Thank you, Julie. You're the best, too. Yeah, I'm, you know, brace yourself. Season 39, they're 20. They've gone back to 20 castaways again. It was... You know, 18 this time, and now they're cycling right back to 20 and Boston Rob and Sandra. And who do you think they're going to give the airtime to? So it's going to be a challenge to meet and and get our heads around that. That's why the roster is always so important to us. Next up, we got a call from Kim J. Hey, Joanne and Stacey. This is Kim J from Nashville. This finale was super entertaining, very unpredictable, very exciting. I enjoyed pretty much every minute of it but for me it was ultimately unsatisfying i have so many issues but first i will talk about the few things that i did enjoy i thought for as much as they had to pack into this episode they did a really good job with it it didn't feel rushed i felt like we got to see everything and understand everything i thought that with the three or four days that chris had he certainly made the most of it i loved him giving up his immunity idol to make fire i thought that was really exciting i was on the edge of my seat so those things i really enjoyed my frustration really comes from the theme i just don't like it i think it's such an unfair advantage to have someone who spent 
that much time with the jury to come back into the game at all. At least with the Redemption Island concept, they left and you would get information as they left, but you didn't get to hear what jurors were actually thinking for weeks at a time. That's just, to me, goes completely against the whole premise of Survivor, which is you vote out people and then they have to convince these same people that you voted out to vote for you in the end. So for Chris to be to able to sit on the jury with people he did not vote out, for people to be on the jury that never played with him, it, it was just very, very unfortunate. I, I just didn't like it. I don't ever want to see this theme again. I enjoyed Reem. I enjoyed the experiment to an extent, but I, I just don't need to see it again. I just think it's very unfair. And I was really, really ticked off that they gave him an idol like they gave Rick. I was fine with him giving a Rick an idol, not because it was Rick, but because it was at 13. Giving someone an idol at six and you have the fire making challenge at four, I just didn't like it. I feel very strongly that they should stop having idols at six. I think you need one pure vote before the fire making challenge. I still don't like the fire making challenge. And now that you've had three of four people that won the fire making challenge win the season, everybody's going to be lobbying to make fire, much like Gavin was trying to do. It's, I just, oh, it was just so frustrating for me. That being said, I'm, I'm okay with Chris winning. He's not the worst winner. I still think that's Ben. I don't think it's the most controversial winner. I still think that's Michelle Fitzgerald. But um, I was... I was unsatisfied, I have to say. And as far as the Island of Idols, which is obviously a play, they think the idols are gonna be at this island, but really it's survivor idols and the idols are probably still gonna be at back at camp. But I've got all summer to mull over that. So thanks you guys for all you do. <laughs> all right, thanks Kim J. Good stuff. Next up, we got an email from Tina in Virginia. Dear Joanne and Stacy, you did a great recap for the finale. Thank you. Your podcast has been a comfort on my 40-day road trip to the southern states. I will be home Saturday night just in time for the final feedback show. I did enjoy the season. The person that provided me with the most entertainment was Reem. Don't you like her, dude? I can't (laughs) wait to see her back. (laughs) No. (laughs) the joe long hair bit was not impressive sometimes it feels that jeff is trying to be like a younger cool person but it doesn't always land oh that's a perfect description yes to all your listeners thanks for all your feedback i love our community on this podcast i'm hoping joanne and stacy will throw a big party at their house and we can all finally see each other (laughs) just joking Adios to all, and be safe until next season. All right. Thanks, Tina. Mm -hmm. Uh, The whole hair thing that Jeff did, you know, he's trying to do like some kind of Samson thing. You know, he loses or gain his power instead of losing. Actually, hold that thought. Hold that thought? Yep. I want you to bring it up right after this. Oh, we're we're going to go to Marla and Sarah real quick oh, because okay. it's relevant. I would, okay, I don't hear the audio, so I didn't know that. So, sorry. Hi, Joanne and Stacy. Hi, Survivor friends. This is Marla. And this is Sarah. We have been feedback slackers this year, but we wanted to weigh in on the controversial end of the season. No, I'm not talking about the ending. I'm talking about something else. Joe cutting his hair. Joe cutting his hair has been causing great sadness in our house. Sarah, what do you think? I don't see how our relationship is going to work anymore. I'm just so disappointed in his choices. I know. And without that man bun, I just don't really see how it can work out anymore. Do you? No. No. So I guess that's some big news. Sarah's going to have to look elsewhere for her future. And Joe is really missing out. We hope you all have a wonderful, safe, happy, healthy summer. Joanne and Stacy. thank you for all you do. We will look forward to talking to Joanne and Stacy this summer and the rest of you in the fall. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye. All right. Thank you, Marla. Thank you, Sarah. We love it. Keep in touch. Sorry for your loss, Sarah, but I think... uh, No man, but... Sierra Don Thomas is probably pretty happy that you're signing off at this point. (laughs) Now go ahead and share your Joe's hair story. I think it fits really good here. Thank you for not letting me spoil there a little bit. So um, anyway, the the whole thing came about because I was so confused in what they were doing 
but it seems so fumbled yeah but well and it was <laughs> like Tina was talking it was kind about. it was fumbled yeah but what came of it was Joe actually cutting his hair right after the finale this was not planned Sia saw what he and Jeff were saying sent a text to Joe and said hey if you will cut your hair and donate it to charity for you know children with cancer and uh, to a charity that makes wigs for these children. She said, I'll give you 15 grand. So Joe negotiates back and says, okay, uh, the only reason I'd cut my hair was for charity. And he said, he said, I will do that if you will agree to give the 15000 to charity as well. Oh. What do you think, Sarah? Worth another look? Sarah, come on. <laughs> So oh. anyway, I thought, oh, that was so sweet. So they they set it up by the end of the um, the show, by the end of the finale. Uh, somebody came in and um, cut Joe's hair. Sierra was there to support him, mm-hmm. and then they did an interview with him. Um, well, he did the self interview out of the fishbowl thing. He just said he walked on the, the red, red carpet. carpet. Yeah, mm-hmm. and yeah. So, well, I don't know with if his, he walked the carpet. The with whole his carpet. cut hair. Yeah, but he, yeah, there are pictures out there now. It's all over the internet, so you can see Joe with his short haircut. Such a good costume. But yeah, that was that was pretty cool. And just to wrap up the whole Sia donations, she actually gave Aurora fifteen thousand as well, just because she survived foster care. And so she said, I'll give you fifteen thousand too. All right. To be supportive. Great to hear from you again, Marla and Sarah. We enjoyed that. Good job. Next up we got an email from Josh the plush moose from Massachusetts. Dear Joanne and Stacy, what a wacky finale. Very entertaining, but a weird finish. There's a lot to unpack. My final observations. Was Jeff replaced by a pod person? (laughs) Did I hear him say it was okay that Keith and Wendy quit because the edge was hard? Yeah. Yeah, it was disappointing. Mm -hmm. I just chose to breeze over that. Yeah, I did too. Aubrey's Lazarus Advantage replaced her ropes with flypaper (laughs) to give her a better grip. (laughs) <laughs> Chris wanted to play a perfect game. He'll have to settle for a perfect million-dollar episode. I'm betting that the extinct ate up a big chunk of the producer's housing cost savings when they finally got to Ponderosa. Yeah, you could see in the videos. In the were, food bill. They were plowing through the food, weren't they? Mm-hmm. Jeff had Chia Pet hair. <laughs> I think he goaded Joe into a haircut out of follic- follicular... <laughs> Follicular <laughs> jealousy. Oh, okay. I like that. Follicular jealousy. Okay. It's a good thing Ryan Reynolds didn't play this season. Otherwise, Lauren's alliance would have never been able to trust her. Oh, joy. Yet another final tribal council with goats bleeding, bleating their cases to the jury. <laughs> yeah. Salesmen like Chris are the reason I have no soliciting sign outside my front door. Us too. I agree with that 100%. They don't work, but... For weeks, Dev... Yeah, because a lot of those guys can't read. For weeks, Devons was the white whale pursued by a host of hapless Ahabs. Chris finally harpooned him at the fire-making challenge. Survivor gods to Lauren. You were an idiot last night. Try again. Done. (laughs) Still an idiot. Oh, the final five idol palooza turned into idols full fool losers. Oh, at final five, Jeff asked if anyone else wanted to play an idol. Weren't four idol plays enough? Slow and steady may win the race, but Chris was glacial in the rocker challenge. During the fire challenge, was Jeff auditioning for a sports play-by-play announcer job? With Jeff as his agent, Devons will probably get a bigger, better job, Mark. A better job in a bigger market. My brain got ahead of my mouth there. Julie patterned her game after Willard's. He had to watch both chewing endlessly after numerous reward challenges. Chris used a host of salesman's tricks to beat his competitors. They're lucky he didn't sell them vacuum cleaners, too. Final Tribal Council felt like a college seminar on Survivor gameplay. I'm happy for Devons, but I'm done with the SIA award. I've heard that Julie added a line of crying towels to her Etsy store. 
That's great. She drawing him with a sharpie too. In the end, did any of the gameplay between Lazarus challenges even matter? Discuss. I was pleased that Jeff talked to 14 different cast members during the reunion. Next season, stuck on an island with Rob, Sandra, and their egos. Reward or punishment? Anyway, that's it for me f from this for this season. Thanks, Joanne and Stacy, for all you do. I can't wait to hear what the other fans have to say. Have a good summer, everybody. Thank you, Josh. Great job, buddy. Rocked it all season long. Well, he does have a point about, you know, how much did it really matter from when uh, Devons came back in to Chris came back in. Yeah, well, and... Yeah, you can kind of say it about the whole season. That's why they goofed it up. Okay, next up, we got a call from Jill. Hi, Joanne and Stacey. Hi, Survivor fans. Jill from the Outback here. I can't believe that's another season come and gone. It just seemed to fly so quickly. It was only the other day that we just started watching it. I'm not really sure about the season. I don't think with that result, having a bloke who hardly played in the actual game, I don't think it was a good season. Like, still a bad Survivor season is still better than a good TV show. For the show as a whole, I don't think it was good for the game, for the show, for Chris to win it. But I think he was the best one out of the three that were um, in the final tribe. And in those final few votes, they were just so intent on getting Rick Devons out that they just overlooked Chris. He, he should have been voted out. You've got a bloke there that spent, you know, weeks with the jury why wouldn't they vote for him there's going to be people far more knowledgeable about the game to to make the proper comments about it but i wanted to say that the thing that i took out of the whole finale was that i've got to wear more makeup i hardly recognized reem and aurora <laughs> uh, they just look so different with makeup on it was good anyway that's about all i've got guys thanks so much for the show joanne and stacy and to everyone that leaves feedback and, and contributes on the Facebook page as well. It's always good fun. Thanks, guys. Happy days, everyone. Bye. All right. Thanks, Jill. Thanks for signing on one more time here for Season 38. Next up, we got a call from Jeremiah and Silent Rachel. Hello, Joanna and Stacy. Hello, Survivor fans. It's Jeremiah here in the car with my lovely wife, Rachel. Say hello, Rachel. Hello, Rachel. Anyway, uh, we... Uh, I don't know how Rachel felt, but I would definitely fall in a category of someone who is extremely disappointed with this season. Not because of the cast and not because of the outcome. Let's give it to Chris, man. He really played an amazing, what, four days there towards the end. Made the moves he had to make. It was really fun to watch. And, uh, yeah, so that part was exciting, and I have no problem with our winner necessarily. My problem, of course, is with CBS and the way this season was edited and the storytelling that they decided to go with. Now, from what I understand, that is something that they had, that Jeff had talked about. It was planned that way. They thought it would be really exciting to do this complete blind side to us as an audience. But for me, I feel like this, this just is not good television. I don't want to have a winner that I know absolutely nothing about. I mean, I told my wife during lunch yesterday, they could have just taken someone for production and grabbed a camera guy and said, hey, you, come here. You want to compete for a million dollars for a couple of challenges here? I mean, it just didn't serve us very well. And, uh, you know, listen, the way I look at it, EOE is an experiment. They tried it. It didn't work. I don't want to see it again. Um, personally, because I dislike this season so much, I don't even think it's fair to rank this necessarily against other seasons. I did kind of want to rank it maybe against the other seasons that we had. Re people uh, had opportunities to come back into the game to win. And with that said... Because of the edit, I mean, I won't make it as low as Redemption Island. I still think that's probably the worst one. But it's it's definitely just maybe the next notch up from that. It's it's definitely towards the bottom of everything with having probably Blood versus Water and Pearl Islands being at the top of that list for those seasons. But, uh, yes, as you guys know, I've never been a big fan of this twist of having people have a chance to come back in the game because, as I've mentioned before, it takes away from everything that what Survivor is about. Again, yep. it was definitely an exciting finale, just not the kind of excitement I prefer. And I'm not just saying that because, of course, it affected my JSFS, JFSL score because, obviously, I'm not the only one that scored zero points. A lot of us did. Luckily, I didn't finish bottom in the side challenge because I was really concerned about that. But it, clearly, that did not happen. 
All right, so next season, now I'm concerned about next season. I wasn't completely concerned until I saw those giant head statues. Oh my God, that was the biggest jumping shark thing I've ever seen. That was terrible. But, you know, I heard Josh Wiggler say he's really excited about this concept, and he's he's high on the season at the moment, so I'm going to be high on the season. I'll judge it a lot more during our Judge a Book by its cover show. Congratulations to our side winner. I can't wait, of course, till next season. Hopefully it will be a good one. I'm going to give it a chance. Really, that's it for me. You guys take care, and until next time, this is Jeremiah and Silent Rachel over there coming to you from Southern California. All right. Thanks, Jeremiah and Silent Rachel. Good job. Next up, we got an email from Boo in California. Hi, Joanne and Stacy. I haven't written much this season, but I've been listening to your show. Thank you so much for your podcast. It's by far my favorite Survivor podcast, and I look forward to it. About the finale, this might be an unpopular opinion, but I loved it. I was cheering for Rick Devins, and I think he might be one of my favorite Survivor contestants of all time. But he went out in a very epic way, which I think will only add to his legend status, more so than if he were to have won. I've noticed a lot of his critics have become his supporters after the finale. I don't think we're going to see another Survivor like him in a while. A lot of people are complaining about what he did to Julie and Lauren was the same as what Ron did to him, but I totally disagree. He hid those idols before he found his and wasn't intentionally trying to humiliate them. This means it isn't even comparable to what Angelina did in Mm. David versus Goliath. She hid an idol after she found hers to make that other girl look bad. Even then, I didn't think that was as big of a deal as people made it to be, and I love Angelina. I was fascinated about Chris coming back into the game. It really had me on the edge of my seat for a lot of reasons. It really altered the game in a way we've never seen before. For all the reasons people criticize what happened, those reasons led to fascinating television. We've never seen someone enter the game after being out of it so long, and you could really sense how long he was out of the game by the interactions of the tribe. Was it just me, or did it almost seem like people were kind of afraid of him? It was like his calm behavior amplified how crazy and paranoid the existing tribe members were. He also seemed kind of zombified and unable to really blend into the existing level of anxiety of the game at that stage. He was able to think rationally in a way the existing members weren't. That's why I think he successfully got people to do things against their best interest. The existing tribe members were also confused by the information he gave them about how they were perceived. People argue if this twist was fair, but the tribe knew it was going to happen by this point. It wasn't a shock to them. They failed to get rid of him because they thought Chris had no chance to win. But then he pulled off that iconic final tribal and gave up immunity, and by the time he beat Devon's, I think he deserved to win over Julie and Gavin. I think this finale was special because there were so many variables that had to be just perfect for this outcome. I don't think anyone but Chris could have won from the edge. He had a unique relationship with Devons, and he knew Lauren from their original tribe. Anyway, I enjoyed the season. Thank you so much for hosting your show. I'm sad it's over. All right. Thanks, Boo. Up next, we have a call from Jen. Hi, everyone. This is Jen in California. Well, I feel like I've done this post about 50 times, and that's because, frankly, I've been walking around muttering to myself for the last three days. I kind of prepared myself for a letdown on the finale. Most finales are a letdown, you know, because the one you want to win doesn't always win, but we've all kind of tried to learn that Survivor is all about the journey and everybody is really deserving of winning if they go out there and no matter how they play their game, etc., etc. 
And I basically had talked myself into the fact that if Rick Devins wins, it's going to be somewhat satisfying, but a little bit of a letdown because it seemed so predictable. And if Rick Devins doesn't win, then it's going to be a big letdown because they spent so much time on Rick Devins that they really didn't showcase anybody else that we could really rally behind and put our hearts and souls behind. Okay, so then this came out of complete left field. Congratulations to Chris. I do believe every Survivor winner is deserving, but... I feel like the theme itself this year was just a loser. I can't really reconcile someone getting voted out of the game, especially so early on, coming back and winning a million dollars. I just, it's, I don't know. I, have, I don't know. I haven't, I don't have a comment on that. So um, bottom line is I really hope to never see Edge of Extinction again. But nevertheless, I did enjoy the episode very much. And I wanted to comment on one thing that I've been thinking about and muttering to myself about lately. Frankly, people walking by me probably think I'm a crazy person. I just need to wear my earphones all the time so people think I'm talking on the phone to somebody. <laughs> but I want to talk about Rick Devins giving the immunity idol piece back to Chris. Now, I understand withholding the idol piece makes you really look like a villain. But giving it back, obviously, is an advantageous look. The person he gave it back to got immunity, got immunity, and won the game over him. So here's what I would do. If I were in the game and it was the final six and Chris came to me and said, hey, we played together before, will you hold this for me? The most honest play I could do would be to say, no, I'm showing you I'm trustworthy because I'm telling you no. If you give this to me, I will not give it back. We both have compelling stories. And to be honest, neither of us, if we're honest with ourselves, want to sit next to each other at the final. So rather than take it from you, say I'll give it back and then not do so, I think it is in your best interest to try to find someone else to convince to hold it and then give it back. And let Chris go and try and find somebody else who he can try to talk into uh, holding onto it and giving it back to him. But if I were any of those players, I would have, all of them, I would have just said, no thanks, I don't want to hold it for you. That would have just nullified his vantage right there. I feel like that would have been the smarter play. But anyway, if I ever play, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, now in my final 20 seconds, I feel like I'm a big negative Nelly here, but I'm excited to see Sandra next season, but I am never excited to see Rob Mariano come back onto Survivor. I am not interested to hear words of wisdom from a three-time failure, one-time winner where the game was just handed to him. I just can't take it. Nevertheless, I will still watch and enjoy because it is Survivor, and I love the journey. And I've loved the journey with all of you. Joanna and Stacey are awesome. Survivor fans, podcast people, you are awesome. Till next season. Bye. All right. Thanks, Jen. That's that's interesting. A way to nullify it. Mm. Never occurred to me. I like that. I, I don't know that everyone would go in. That would be such a huge risk. And that's one of those prisoner dilemma kind of questions. But yeah, if everyone just rejected it, said, no, I won't hold the half for you, it just completely gets rid of it. That's very good. Hmm. That's like a first principles kind of analysis. I wish the people who plan Survivor would think more that way. <laughs> oh, good job, Jen. Thank you. Next up, we got a call from Paul. Hey, Paul in Louisiana here. And wow, you know, I just don't know how to feel about this season. Well, the season itself as a social experiment, yeah, I know exactly how I feel about that. But the outcome of the past 13 weeks, well, I'm not so sure about that. Usually I either like a season or not, but just one week ago I said that if Rick didn't win, I'd feel cheated. And there's no way I wanted the second returning player to win because it just wouldn't be fair. But after what we saw Wednesday night, well, I just don't know. I'm actually satisfied with the ending because of how Chris played a short but memorable final cycle, but I'm also upset that after all Rick went through, he, he just couldn't do it. But I suspected that all along. I kept saying that there was no way his lucky streak of finding idols and winning immunity would hold out. I mean, all good things come to an end, right? And then when Chris came back in and turned things around on Rick, which I thought was kind of fitting because to be perfectly honest with you, and I know I'm a small minority here, well, I'm just not that big a Rick fan as everybody else is. Yeah, he was entertaining and he worked harder than anyone else out there, but he kept pulling rabbits out of his hat each week, which I felt kept him in check. Well, more or less. There were still a few times when he had, what, a mean streak? And, and yeah, that's the wrong phrase. It's too strong for what little of it we saw. But whatever it was, it was there. And it would come to the surface in small doses whenever things weren't coming together for him. Mark my words that when he comes back, and we all know that he will, he'll be less of what we saw this time around and more emotional on the other side of the elated scale, which will tarnish the survivor reputation that he built this season. Now, 
And here's the rub for me. I really did want him to win, even after feeling this way. And I'd have been happy with that. Not only happy, but thrilled. Yet I feel very content and almost just as thrilled with Chris as the winner, even though he's possibly the last person I wanted to see win just last week. He was reintroduced far too late in the game, yet he made it work for him, and I'm happy for him, possibly even because it helped show that other side of Rick. After he lost the fire-making challenge and he glared at Chris, barely keeping his tongue in check, well, it wasn't disbelief so much as anger because Chris got Rick's way of the win. But I wanted Rick to win, so yeah, I'm confused about how I feel. So, as for the theme in general, yeah, I didn't really like it. My complaints are few, so I'll list them. First, the jury was too large. There's a reason the jury always starts after the merge, and this season certainly showed that we need to return to form here. Why would you vote for someone you've never even met? Second, all of the jury, aside from possibly Reem, became friends, and that was surely an unfair advantage. And third, come on, returning a player into sixth place is far too late in the game. And I think that's it, although I'm sure I'll think of far better complaints as soon as I submit this. So again, it was fun to watch, but I dislike the theme far more so than Ghost Island, which I thought was pretty lame as well, but which has come up a notch after watching this season. As for Island of Idols, well, I'll wait before passing judgment, but if you ask me, the only advice that Rob can give is to play again and again and again and again until you finally win. (laughs) I'm just glad he's not actually playing this time around. And yeah. Yeah, that bust of him? Is it actually possibly a bust of Joe? Were the producers thinking that Joe would win and come back as a coach, and then they got Rob at the last minute and cut the statue's hair? Because, come on, that don't look like Rob. So thanks to all of you out there that participate. I love hearing everyone each and every week. And thanks to Joanne and Stacy for, yep, everything, of course. And thanks, Steve, for allowing so many of us to play JSFL. I'll be back in September, and I hope the rest of you will be, too. Bye. All right. Thank you, Paul. Yeah, I think that's probably the bottom line for me is that I'm happy for Chris. Uh, I think he's a deserving winner. He he played really well when he came back. Um, but when I think about it, it's like I don't really care because I don't know you. Yeah. At all. I don't know you. I don't know anything about you. Yeah. Good job. I'm happy for you, you know, but I don't still don't really care about you because I don't know you. Exactly. This, they, I appreciate, we talked about this before. I think Dalton Ross summed it up perfectly. I appreciate that they're willing to experiment, that they don't just keep turning out exactly the same because mm-hmm. we would get bored mm-hmm. with the same thing. True. So we appreciate that they're willing to look at things and experiment. And Probst himself at one point knew that bringing people back in the game was bad, that it was just a fundamentally bad idea. And, and you know, I wish he hadn't lost sight of that, but definitely he did. And so we're left with this because it breaks Survivor. Fire should represent life. You're voted out and you're out. And then except with the... If you get voted, if you're lucky, fortunate enough, and uh, let's face it, the majority of the game's luck. There's so much luck That's that factors too. in. It's like 60, 80 percent luck. I don't know. It's a huge shift towards luck in how you do in the game. Well, in the, in that sense, right? So then, yeah, then the people you voted out, you've got to convince them to award you the million dollars. These basic underlying core principles don't violate those follow the first principles concept when you're going back and looking at things and trying to figure out how to innovate well even outside of the twist for this season the editing i didn't really care anymore about gavin and julie either yeah, they they made i some, didn't feel like i really knew them when they worked backwards from the result and so we can see now why they made the choices that they made. Well, here's you the thing. You didn't need to know anything about them, I guess, because they weren't significant in the scheme of things. But I really enjoyed the Ponderosa videos. I felt like I got, got to see people better and more of them and who they are mm-hmm. by watching the Ponderosa videos. Than anything they gave us in the And seeing their real personalities and, you know, so just getting to see that. 
made me think, oh, a lot of that was in the editing because I'm sure that Gavin, everybody liked him, but we didn't really see a whole lot. You know why? Because they took the time to focus on the returnees. On the other stuff, when they had yeah. the When they had the Kama tribe members talking, what were they talking about in the first part of the game? They were talking about the returnees. They were talking about Joe and Aubrey, Joe and Aubrey, Joe and Aubrey. And so it's... they. <laughs> The set of ingredients, Pull the focus, yeah, the yeah, the the ingredients that they had to work with ended up going in that direction, and so they made those choices given they knew what the outcome. I'm sure, just like Chris, they did the best they could with what they had. Sure, but it's there's some ways to avoid this in how you approach the concept of trying to innovate and to yeah. and to do experiments. And just the willy nilly. Th- I mean, thank goodness they're not using tons of CGI. <laughs> yeah. In here, the big heads are you know headed in that direction there for Island of Idols. Uh, I the parallels between the showrunners for Game of Thrones messing up this final season just Uh-oh. completely. Let's don't even go there. Completely ignoring what good character development is and how you need to build a story and how to get from A to B. I just see it in this season. I'm forever going to think this season's tainted. It's not even that different from the original Fiji season with the haves versus the have nots because the theme is so broken that it messes up the whole season. Not that. So the great thing about here now, let's bring it back. Let's bring it back. Right. And let's the positive. We had a lot of fun. In the yeah. course of the season, a lot of fun and excitement. We even we like a lot of people enjoyed how the finale played out, and that's because we've got this great community, and we're so thankful and grateful for the, a group of fans who can get together and share. And we like the shows for different reasons, and we find different outcomes pleasing, and that's all mm-hmm. good. And the main thing is, I just want to say thank you to everyone over the course of the season. We had a great time together. I don't have a negative association with the season even and so I can step back and analyze the theme and say this one was severely broken. I too hope they never repeat it again. It's an example of bad storytelling, but that's here's the ingredients they had to work with in that regard. So because of the great community here, because of our joy for the show and our gratefulness for the show, right? We're able to get together and we share and we just have fun with every episode, no matter where it fits on the spectrum between good and bad. And we want to say thank you to everybody who took the time to send in your final thoughts on the finale and all through the season. Good job to everyone. As always, we want to say a a big thanks to Paul for creating and maintaining the roster and updating it through the season. I see what you did there, too. You left the practice advantage on Aubrey's name because you're poking a little bit of fun at her right at the end because of how important (laughs) it was for her and significant. Thank you for that roster. We use it all the time. and all we, the we, time. We hear the fans doing that, too, and certainly we'll need one with the 20 new folks coming in next season. True. Yeah, and thanks for creating the logo for the JSFL. That was something that was always extra work for us because neither Joanne nor I are very good with the graphics, and you, you took that on, and we appreciate it. Thanks to Jeremiah for watching over the flock at the Survivor Fans Podcast Fans page on Facebook. And also to Steve for creating and maintaining that JSFL website. We would not get to have all the JSFL fun we have without it. Thank you so much, Steve. Wow. What a season. You know, when I look up, I just wanted to say one last thing. Mm -hmm. When I look up at the roster, I, after watching the Ponderosa videos, I feel like I know the other people better than the final three. Oh, yeah. And I'm sure, sure they're all lovely people, but it's just like I, I'm i not invested. It feels like I don't really know you, so it's hard to... And just after seeing a, little, a few little video clips of the mm-hmm. other people, I feel a little bit more, you know, having known. Connected. So, yeah. So before I forget, I got one more thing I want to say. Dalton <laughs> Ross, and I mentioned this before, I teased it up, but I didn't. He did another excellent long piece. Now, it's going to take a little while to read it, but I highly recommend it. You remember back at the beginning of the season, we got the one where he went behind the scenes on the marooning at the very first episode Mm -hmm. and gave all the details from the different departments and how they all pulled together to make that happen. He's gone back 
to look at the biggest blind side in survivor history he's gone back to fans versus favorite survivor micronesia to look at and talk to each person that participated even jury members hmm. for that and it's a fantastic read i highly recommend it again it'll be in the show notes and if you for some reason haven't watched that season fans versus favorite survivor micronesia watch that season and then go read this interview at the end of it because it's a it's probably the most historic moment in survivor history the, the most talked about the most repeated one and, and he, you will put a link for us on the web as i said there'll be a link there to Yay. the dalton ross long piece there it and man dalton's just killing it this season with his work so I kudos always love dalton mm-hmm. and we also want to say congratulations again to james and shannon for not only winning all of jsfl but the side challenge good yeah. job you guys it's living on the edge Feel free to send your parody based on this season right away while the season's fresh in your mind. Joanne's always, that's that's Joanne's voice. That's <laughs> but, it, but it is due by the deadline of our Jabbik Part 2 show in September. So we are looking forward to that, brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he knows how I hate to say, oh, don't forget to send it in, send it in. Mm-hmm. So I'll relax if he gives it to me. So. Mm-hmm. Okay, but. I just want to say we hope you all have a great summer. Be safe, and we'll see you back here next season for the Javik Show for Season 39, Survivor Island of the Idols. Have a good one.